My name's Layla Singleton, um, I'm 35, born in 1978 um, and I was born uh, and bred in Chesterfield in Derbyshire. Um, my mum, um, she uh, had three children, I've got two sisters that are um, 12 and 14 years older than me so I kind of grew up but it was like I had three mothers. Um, my mum was um, uh, she worked part time um, on a on a market stall, um, but she was um, she was big into you know charity and she used to run brownies and that sort of thing. So she spent a lot of time um, sort of helping others. And um, my dad was a plumber. Um, so he worked, you know, quite long hours. We didn't, we didn't see that much of him really. Um, so, uh, so yeah, it, it was like because of the age difference, I was kind of, um, it, it was almost like I was an only child, you know. And my two um, older sisters, you know, they helped help look after me. So, um, and as a family, really, we 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 were quite religious. Um, my, I've got a cousin who's like a priest, and my uncle's very religious, um, and we were actually it's uh, not sorry Catholic, um, we we're actually uh, Methodist Christians. Um, so it was like every Sunday, um, you know, I was going to church. Um, I went to Sunday school, used to take scripture exams, and um, that sort of thing. So um, it was quite a you know a grounded religious family um, as I was growing up. Uh, well, Methodists, uh, I would say, out of all the different sects of, of Christianity, uh, Methodists are quite quite relaxed and open. Um, I, you know, it was fun at, at church. I did used to enjoy it, um, and socially, you know, we, we did a lot of social activities as well. The Holy Trinity was something, obviously, um, that was was preached um, at, at you know at Methodist um, church, but it was something I always struggled to get the concept of. Um, and obviously, I understood that it was the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. But then I was taught about Jesus in Sunday school. But then I I, I was confused that Jesus was God, you know, because I, I learned about God and then I learnt about Jesus and then it's like but it's the same thing and I, I never I never understood the concept of it um, and actually at four years old, old I had a really powerful dream um, where I actually went to heaven I, I died in my dream and I went to heaven and um, and I got there and you know and I saw the beautiful garden and, and flowers and birds and, and all this kind of thing and um, I was looking for Jesus to greet me you know because obviously from my teachings in Christianity you know I, I um, you know prayed to Jesus and you know and, and this sort of thing and so I was looking for Jesus but Jesus wasn't there to greet me and actually the garden was empty where, where I was walking um, but an angel came to me and said that it's not Jesus that you need to go to you need to go to God and and in my heart I knew where where I had to go I was like walking forward and I had to go to God um, and and I was basically walking um, and at that point I woke up and, and and I still remember I was four year old and I still remember that dream and I woke up like feeling all over my body and I was saying to my mum like am, am I alive I, I've just been dead like you know and my mum was like really freaked out out by this dream and I told her you know I recalled that I was looking for Jesus I couldn't find Jesus but I was going to go to God um, and um, so my mum actually spoke to the priest about it and he said although he didn't understand the dream that it was a blessing that I had a dream that I actually went to heaven um, so that was a concept that always stuck with me that you know that it, when I died I was going to God I wasn't going to Jesus so um, you know it was uh, it was quite a significant um, part of my journey to Islam. Before I, um, I reverted to Islam, um, I didn't really know that much about it. The only um, perception I had is, is from what I saw in the media. Obviously, it was quite negative, so um, I guess, you know, due to my own ignorance, my, my perception was, was quite negative about Islam. Like, I thought, you know, it was all about jihads and, um, you know, all about violence and this sort of thing. And, and so it wasn't until I actually researched and, you know, looked into, you know, the fact that Islam was a religion of peace. Um, and then when I began to, to meet other Muslims, when I took my shahada, you know, I was really surprised at how peaceful and patient and calm and, you know, what good characteristics uh, Muslims had. Um, so I guess it was then that I realised that the perception I had all my life about Muslims was, was wrong. And I guess now with me being a revert and me meeting, you know, other non-Muslims, you know, and, and I talk to them about exactly what, what Islam means and what my religion means to me, um, you know, and they're surprised. So I think the more people that talk about Islam in, in a positive way, um, you know, 
know, the better, unfortunately. Um, like I say, just from what you see in the media is, is not always the case of what Islam is about. Obviously, since taking my shahada, I got to meet, uh, you know, lots of other Muslims and, and, and they welcomed me with open arms. Like, straight away, I felt like I was part of the community. They were really, really supportive with me. Um, and, and in terms of my social life, um, you know, alhamdulillah, it, it's been great um, because um, there's lots of social activities going on, you know, inside the masjid and out, uh, lots of community fundraisers and things like that. And, it, and it's just really nice to be part of a community where, you know, the people are all like-minded, you know, they're all good people with, you know, with good, good morals and it's, you know, it, it's really nice to be part of that community. Uh, when I was 10 year old, um, my, my, my family home separated, like my mum left and my family home separated so we had a lot of um, hardships, you know, I was, went from a very secure religious family to, um, I lived with my dad and, and my stepmom who, you know, who weren't really religious. Um, so at that time I, I started suffering from depression, like, you know, coming up to about 13 year old I started suffering from depression and I, I kind of felt lost. Um, so through that journey, I, I looked. I was looking for something. Uh, you know, I was looking for like an answer to you know to the problems that I'd got. And so I did a, a lot of searching. Like at school, we did like religious studies. And so I looked into a lot of different religions. Like when I was 16, I looked into Hinduism, um, and then I looked into spiritualism. Um, and and I actually married when I was 18, um, a son of, of two spiritualist mediums. And um, so you know, from there on, I, I you know I was looking into you know to that for an answer and, and my journey took me to Canada though they were actually Canadian so I moved to Canada um, and my best friend was a Native American so I looked into Native American beliefs and her grandmother was actually a shaman and uh, I spent a lot of time on the Native, um, you know, the Native re Reservation uh, doing sweat lodges, pipe ceremonies and, you know, and I, I appreciated the concept that, you know, the God was the creator and the creator created the universe but still it wasn't enough for me just going once in a while to, um, you know, to the reserve and doing a sweat lodge, it, it just wasn't enough. Um, so basically my circumstances changed, um, I separated with my husband um, when I was 21 and then I came back to the UK and um, so I, I took with me you know all the beliefs that I'd got from you know my na Native American friends um, but you know I, I kind of let that go and, and then I was still in a period um, of, of not knowing uh, you know what religion I was. I was uh, about 30 and uh, somebody said to me uh, you know why have you ever listened to a Quran recital and I'm like no you know it, Islam is like something even though I, I love Arabic language like Islam is like something a religion I've never looked into so um, the person said to me well why don't you just listen to you know a Quran recital and see what you think so basically I uh, listened to a, you know the first Quran recital in, in Arabic and I just had a life-changing experience with it um, even though I couldn't understand the language um, it moved me to a way that I was I was elated uh, but I was in tears I was like absolutely sobbing um, and I had a really overwhelming feeling um, it, it's really strange but it was almost as if something entered me you know it, it was that overwhelming you know it was like something was inside my body and, and I, I just felt overwhelmed and, and I couldn't understand what it was or why uh, you know why I would feel so moved you know just by listening to the Quran like it, it basically stirred my soul uh, and I was alarmed by it you know I was like why am I having this experience and it was basically from there that I, I bought a Quran uh, in English and I read it front to back I read the whole Quran um, and that, that was my first um, experience with uh, with Islam. It was basically just listening to the Quran and, and actually even when I still listen to it now I have the same feeling where it, it's like it's almost like a vibration that I feel and, and it actually stirs my, my soul and almost hurts my heart. It, it makes my heart heavy and you know and still now like subhanAllah like you know every time I listen to Quran like I have the same experience so you know it is just the, the word of the Quran it is, is so powerful you know that it can somebody who doesn't know anything about Arabic, anything about Islam, you know, can become so stirred and so drawn to Islam.
and the day after um, I got a copy of um, a Quran, uh, an English copy and uh, and I was just you know okay I, I really need to look into this religion you know I've like you know throughout my life you know Islam has cropped up and I've dismissed it and you know and basically through me being stirred by listening to Quran like um, you know I decided right I'm going to read it so I basically just opened the first page and just started reading like uh, Surah Al-Fatiha and, and you know and basically just read I couldn't put it down I just read and read the Quran um, and I was just first of all I was really surprised um, because I thought Islam was something so different to Christianity I thought Allah was completely different to God um, and and then when I started reading Quran um, I started reading about um, uh, Prophet Isa peace be upon him Jesus uh, Moses uh, angel Gabriel um, you know and and when I was a child you know all the studies that I did um, I was suddenly reading and, and I was shocked. I was like, oh, okay. I didn't realize Islam was like, you know, it was about this, you know. And um, obviously the concept of there the being only one God worthy of worship, you know, that was the thing to me that, um, you know, was like, yeah, you know, Islam is for me because, you know, throughout my life, I've never accepted that Jesus and God is the same. I loved Jesus, um, you know, and, and then when I read that Jesus was... Um, a prophet, a messenger of God, I, I could totally accept that. I wanted to become Muslim and I sort of kind of tested the water a little bit with, you know, some of my family members said, you know, I, I have been reading Quran and, um, you know, and, and I, I want to become Muslim. And um, obviously at the time it was post the 9-11 and, um, you know, basically the, the portrayal in the media was just like, you know, the only thing you learnt about uh, Muslims were, you know, oh, the terrorists and, you know, and all this. So th there was a bit of fear, like within my family and, and with my Myself to you know a certain extent um, and so you know I, I mentioned it to my family and they were basically no don't don't do it it will ruin your life if you become Muslim why would you want to do that um, you know and and at the time I thought yeah you know maybe I, I, I can't I can't do it so I became like a closet Muslim I was like I was listening to Quran in secret and I actually ended up in a relationship with an atheist. Um, and so religion was something in the relationship that I, you know, was never discussed. Um, so I used to like in the car, I'd listen to recitals of Quran or, you know, like I had my Quran like hidden away. And it was something that was always there in the background. Um, but, you know, throughout my relationship, it was, you know, if I mentioned anything about Islam, it was like, it's like, you know, it was totally shunned upon. And it was really difficult because it was like, I couldn't be the person that I wanted to be. And, and fundamentally, in, in the relationship the relationship was flawed because you know if you have different beliefs as somebody like how can you be a life partner with that person it, it just didn't work and um, so my depression throughout that relationship you know um, it got worse and worse because you know I, I was basically trying to be somebody who I wasn't comfortable with being and you know and and the fact that I wanted to be Muslim but the people around me didn't want that for me you know they, they thought it was a bad idea um, and it, it was I was like I was just fighting myself you know for for really for five years you know it was something I wanted to do um, and it wasn't until um, that relationship actually separated and I had you know it ended up being quite a violent relationship and um, it was a horrific breakup and it was a point where I should have just you know shattered to pieces and uh, I picked up the Quran and I started reading Quran every day listening to Quran recitals and, and my friends actually commented you know well, you, you, you're doing really well like you know you appear to be really strong and you know and it was day by day listening to Quran and literally gave me um you know, this strength um, to a point where, um, you know, I was on all these heavy antidepressants. Um, I was like a zombie. I was like falling asleep all the time and, you know, and this this sort of thing. And, uh, you know, through, it was probably about a month of listening to Quran daily. And I just thought, do you know what? I don't even feel depressed anymore. And it, and it is literally through having this time, you know, reading Quran, it, it I felt like it cured me um, to a point where, you know, I thought I don't need to be on the tablets anymore.
This is one of my snakes. I've actually got two snakes now. Um, is a, a ball python. Um, but before Islam, I, I actually had a lot of um, reptiles. I had like over 50 reptiles. And um, I was, um, you know, used to listen to heavy metal music and very different from the person that I am now. Um, obviously, he's a reminder, I guess, of, of my life before Islam. Um, but obviously, yeah, you know, with my old life, you know, there was a lot of sadness there, a lot of depression and, and this sort of thing. Um, Islam has given me an inner peace and, and given me a calm that I didn't have before um, and obviously you know with snakes you know I find they are very calming so um, you know even though I'm Muslim I'm still the same person that I was I'm just a calmer more grounded person um, Islam is, is very practical um, you know for, for people of any walks of life whether you just suffer from depression or you know whether you were a happy person before um, you know it, it can only benefit your life um, you know with the, the inner peace that it gives you Islam is very practical um, for anybody um, you know, no matter what your hobbies are, no matter what walk of life you're from, um, you know, to, to have um, your, your faith, um, you know, and your beliefs in life is, is a guidance for, for life. And, um, you know, for anybody who's thinking of, um, you know, becoming Muslim, um, it can only better your life. I, you know, every single revert that I've met, um, you know, it's the beginning of a very exciting journey, um, you know, to discovering yourself. And, um, you know, before Islam, I didn't even know who I was. I was so lost, you know, whereas now, um, you know, I still like my reptiles and I'm still the same person, I'm just more happy and more content. At the time when I realised that I wanted to accept Islam, um, I'd still got a lot of doubts and the doubts were from, you know, what I'd seen in the media or I did it, you know, I researched and um, I looked into all things like, oh, you know, Islam oppresses women, you know, you're forced to do this, uh, you know, they stone women, they do this, Sharia law. And, and I was so frightened because I'm like, okay, well, I found my belief, I found something I really want to do. But I'm so terrified of Muslims still, you know. And so it was basically through research, through talking to people, that I realised that actually Islam and Muslims are different. Islam is perfect, Muslims aren't, don't confuse the two. And that, um, you know, like the, there is cultural differences with, you know, with Islam. Like with Islam, there is one race, which is the human race. So it doesn't matter whereabouts in the world you come from, you're united. Your brothers and sisters in the Ummah, and you're united with, with Islam. Um, so obviously some of the bad things that I was reading about were you know, certain cultural practices, but was not what Islam was about, you know. Uh, fundamentally, Islam is about peace, uh, you know, the greeting, Assalamu salam alaykum, peace be upon you, um, you know, and it's not a religion of hate, it's not a religion of fighting, and, um, you know, for example, jihad, like, you know, it, it just installs fear in people, um, you know, I studied and I learned that jihad is actually a battle, um, you know, within, within your own self, you know, in, in the name of God, so it can be very, various things, you know, you can be battling your own nafs, like your own desires or, um, so basically I, I re-educated myself of what actually Muslims were um, and then it was at, at that point that I was ready to, you know, coming up to taking the Shahada. In the process where, um, you know, I was um, started listening to Quran every day and I realised that, um, you know, I, I wanted to become a Muslim um, and I started, like, up in my research, I was, like, just, you know, watching YouTube and, you know, all sorts of research on the internet. Um, and then I actually came across, you know, I, I looked at people's shahadas because I heard about that's how you became Muslim, you took a shahada. So I'm like, okay, right. So I watched uh, different shahadas and there was just this one shahada in particular um, where there was a sheikh with a, a British brother, who was actually a black brother, and he was taking his shahada. Um, beforehand, the sheikh asked um, the, the brother lots of different questions. And I'm stood at, uh, at the sink and I'm washing my pots and, you know, and I'm listening to this. And, and I was just like so moved by the shahada. Like I ended up in tears. You know, it was really emotional and all the questions that the sheikh was asking the brother I was thinking yeah, I, I truly believe all those things and um, so as I'm as I'm washing the pots like I basically just took my shahada there and then I and um, you know I started re like reciting like copying the, you know what 
the Sheikh was saying and and then that was it so I felt from that moment I was officially a you know a Muslim so it was a it was a real um, you know um, uh, you know it was a real big moment in my life I think there's a lot of people who are doing a lot of soul searching, especially in this, this day and age, you know, it's a time where a lot of people have, have lost themselves, you know, they, they don't really have a purpose in life. And, you know, for people who are actually doing some soul searching and looking into religion, um, you know, with Islam, it's something that, that people fear. Um, but if you take the time and, and open-mindedly look into Islam, you'll see what a practical religion it is. I mean, you know, scientifically, it's proven that, you know, 1,434 years ago, you know, um, it, it was, uh, you know, written how, how babies were born. We only knew that like one, two hundred years ago, scientifically. Um, you know, there's so many facts that it's a practical religion, um, you know, and if people look into it with, a, you know, an open mind, um, I think people would be very surprised um, just, you know, what uh, an amazing, peaceful religion uh, Islam is. Um, I basically got a date set um, to take my shahada um, and I was really scared because I never met an imam before, I'd never been to a mosque before um, and uh, I'd, I'd already started wearing hijab at that time which um, was quite a difficult process in itself, um, you know, like breaking it to my family and, um, you know, and work and that sort of thing. So by the time I took my shahada I was already wearing hijab. Um, so I went in and as soon as I walked through the doors at the masjid I felt like I came home you know, I just felt so welcomed by everybody. I met all the sisters and, you know, they all hugged me and kissed me and, and all this kind of thing. And I took the shahada and I've never felt so right in, you know, in basically sat down and saying those words, it was perfect. You know, the moment was just perfect. And I was like, this is the, re this is the start of the rest of my life. It's, it's a new me. I've, I've had a, you know, I had a new break, you know, I've had a chance in life and, and this is it from this moment, like my life changes. And after that, uh, I sort of swapped numbers with the sisters and, and they took me upstairs to the madrasa where they were teaching the children. And, and I stood and prayed Salah with the children, uh, which was the first time I prayed Salah in congregation. There's about 40 children. They were all excited because, you know, I was a new Muslim and, um, you know, uh, and I basically stood there praying with them. And um, it was just so overwhelming. I was crying. As I was praying, I was just crying. And I was just like, this is just so amazing. You know, the, the, I can't believe I didn't do this sooner. Islam has basically cured me from being lost. Uh, you know, I was lost and I felt, you know, feel I was guided and I was found. Um, so Islam has given me the capability to beat my depression, to come off antidepressants and be the person that I want to be, um, you know, and better my own character. What more could I want from life, you know, than that? Alhamdulillah. <laughs> true and this is from the, com uh, the, the statistics that we can get from things like the census um, is that as many as three quarters of British converts um, so an estimated 100,000 between 2000 and 2010 were female so um, statistically speaking um, these guys on the panel are a minority uh, just wanted to point that out um, <laughs> and I met her and just seeing how happy she was and her family was and she told me about Islam and by the end of it I was sitting down with her for about three hours I almost started crying and she stopped she's like you're gonna cry I'm like no no I'm fine I'm fine but it's like I was looking for something my whole life and meeting her is when I found it and what I found was Islam and so I embraced it I took my shahada on Eid this year and started wearing hijab every day and you know uh if this is a setup, because it's starting to smell like a setup to me, because in my mind I'm like, you've been set up before, and this, this seems kind of like this. So, and I'm starting to think in my head, you know, scenarios, you know, a young mind at play. You know, I said, this, this, this other guy, my friend, he probably was in the same situation like me, and he probably made a deal with them to get out, as long as he brought <laughs> other Americans and tricked them into coming to the mosque, so they could do their jihad after Juma and get their 70 virgins. <laughs> I was born in Sweden and I was a Protestant and as a Protestant I was uh, baptized and then I had my confirmation. I used to go to Sunday school, I went to uh, teenage church uh, after school and that was a little bit about my religion. Then I moved from Sweden to uh, Denmark where I studied and then from Denmark I moved to um, London 
where I did my university. I finished there with interior architecture. Hello, this is Dr. Gerald Dirks, formerly the Reverend Gerald Dirks. In just a few moments, here on The Dean Show, we'll be talking about my conversion to Islam. Please, don't go away. And when we come back, we have a very special guest who was a former Christian minister. He has graduated with honors from the prestigious Harvard University with a master's in divinity, started studying the Bible at a very young age. He has so much to share with us today on The Dean Show, and I'm so excited.